Hi everybody, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So this is the second video for today. Um, I'm using Craft and Kimmy stamps. Girls just want to have fun. This is a red rubber stamp re-release. Um, it is on sale for this weekend. So if you're watching this on the 31st or the 1st, click the link in the description box below and it's on sale. If it's after that, it'll still be there through the link in the description box below. How does that sound? Um, the red rubber stamp stamped beautifully. You can see it here. I've stamped it out in... This is the My Favorite Things Extreme Black ink. And I'm starting to color her up with my Copic markers. I think this stamp set's absolutely adorable. There's this girl laying down. There's a girl painting her nails. And there's another one with shopping bags. And the sentiments are super cute. I love this stamp set. Um, I figured it was on sale and I had time today. I would pop up another video for you guys. So I did film this one earlier today as well. And we're just going in and working on our skin tones. Um, like I said, these red rubber stamps, they come pre-trimmed. They are not mounted on any foam, so you can either tape them to your acrylic block, which is what I do, and then I just stamp them on a piece of foam to give it that little bit of cushion. Or you can buy, like, cling foam, the cling mounting foam, and you can mount them yourselves and then just re-trim them out. I would recommend using a hot knife to cut through that foam. So... But they stamp beautifully. They're super easy to use. They clean up nice. Although I don't clean my stamps very well, I kind of just stamp them off on scratch paper until no more ink comes off. I should probably get better at that. But, you know, what can I say? Um, <laughs> so we're just working on her face. I did decide to work on her in sections just because otherwise I always forget things. So I did her face and her neck and then I'll do her arms and her legs as soon as I'm done with her face. Um, yeah, I'm saying I'm a lot. Oh, smarten up, Jesse. So I went to grandma's house earlier today. I was talking about that in the last video for supper. Well, dinner. It was like two o'clock we ate or something like that. And my aunt and uncle were there. They had just gotten back from a trip. They went to Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Hawaii. So it was really cool to hear about their trip. Um, they had tons of fun. I'm super happy for them. I hope when I'm in a position, you know, close to retirement like they are, I can afford to do something like that because I think that's super awesome to be able to spend. And they were gone for like a month and a half. Uh, it sounded like a fantastic time. But be anyway, I digress. Back to the coloring. So I'm working on her legs and her skin here. Um, I'm just using, I, I use the same, like when I'm co coloring, I guess, Caucasian fair skin. Um, I use the same Copic markers most of the time, but I do switch out the E00 and E000 and 51 and 50. I intermix those all together just depending if I want it to be a little more yellow or if I want it to be a little more pink toned and it's kind of whichever ones I find in my Copic marker bag first is usually what I go with. There's really not like a giant rhyme or reason to why I pick out those colors. I don't know what else to tell you guys. The Easter Bunny comes tomorrow. Caleb's pretty excited for the Easter Bunny. Me, on the other hand, I'm not so excited for the Easter Bunny because it just means he's going to get a bunch of junk food that he's probably not going to eat. And I'm going to throw in the garbage in a couple of months because that's usually, you know, how it goes. He's not, he's not a giant candy eater. Like, even at Halloween, he goes trick-or-treating. He does, like, I don't know, 15, 20 houses. And then he comes home and has, like, an apple juice and crackers because he's like, well, I don't need to eat candy. Which is great. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not complaining that the kid doesn't like candy a lot. It's just I throw a lot of it away all the time because he gets it at different times of the year for different things. And he's not, like, a giant fan of sweets. He eats, don't get me wrong, he eats candy and he eats chocolate and he eats junk food. Um, but he's not, he'd definitely have, like, a green apple or an orange or a banana or grapes or strawberries, raspberries, those kinds of things over top of, over the instead of having like a chocolate bar, which is fantastic. It keeps me eating better too. So I appreciate that. Good on you, little man. <laughs> so I'm going in, I'm, when I do images like this and I want to do like white clothing and stuff like that, I tend to do the lighter colors first. So I'm doing the white of her socks and the white on her shirt before I go on to any of the bright colors, just because I don't want to go into like, I'm going to use yellow and pink coming up here in a little bit. And I don't want to go into those yellows and pinks before I have the white in because then I'll go in and I'll hit those colors with the really light gray markers and pull it into the rest of the image and it just makes it a mess. I am going through with my colorless blender here and just blending those colors into the rest of the white of the paper that I didn't color on. Now I know it looks really gray right now on her shirt and socks but once we go in and put all of the 
yellows and pinks into the image, you'll see how that the gray tone just kind of slowly starts to dissipate and it does read as a white with shadows as opposed to being gray, which is what I'm after. So it always looks scary when you first do it because you're like, oh, I colored that thing entirely gray and it doesn't look white anymore. And now I'm going to have to start over and no, 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 no. Do it, leave it alone, do the rest of it and come back and it'll look white. It's amazing how white it looks once you put all of the other colors and everything into the image and start to bring it to life. So I decided to do uh, the emoji like the smiley face on her pajamas yellow and then I did the sleeves and the pants primarily yellow and then we'll do all the polka dots and the color around her t-shirt pink and the patches on her socks like where the toe and the heel go on her socks will also become pink once we get to that color in the image. So I tend to work lightest, like my lightest color, so white, yellow, pink, and then I do the black of her hair. So from lightest to darkest in terms of that kind of a thing, just so I'm not making a mess of stuff. So like I said, we're going to do this all pink. This is my favorite pink combination lately. I don't know. I've been reaching for it all the time. This is the RV 17, and then I use 14, 13, and 11, and sometimes I bring in the 10. I find it's nice and it's a nice bright vivid pink without being really neon. I did pick up the RV, what is it? It's, let me grab my chart here. It's RV 09060402. And I find, it, it's really, really nice, but I find when I color with it, it's, it's very neon and I'm not always after that neon pink look. So it's nice to have this one to be a super bright and vivid pink without going quite to that electric pink look that you get with that other combination. Both are great. It's all a personal preference. I I like to color with a lot of pink, but I just, I don't want neon pink all the time. Sometimes I do. And I mean, I could have used it for this, but this is the ones I grabbed, I guess. So we're just going to finish blending all of these out. It's super easy Copic coloring. Um, the nice thing about these images by Emily for Craft and Kimmy is um, her lines are very clear and crisp as to where your shadow should be and what's in front and what's in behind because you always want to make everything cast a shadow. So like where her um, bent leg is in front of the leg that's straight at the back, that pant leg would cast a shadow onto the one behind it and things of that nature. Like her arm casts a shadow onto the sweater and her hand casts a shadow onto the face and things like that. So we're going to take out these E40s and this is what we're going to use to color up the paper. So I shade the paper first and then once I get it shaded I'm going to come back with that E43 again and I'm just going to draw kind of some squiggles on the paper to make it look like something's written in it. I was going to initially do like squares and make it look like a magazine and then I was like that's far too much work in this tiny little area for something nobody's ever going to notice. So we'll just take this pen and do some squiggles and it'll look fantastic and people will get the same idea as if I was to put a whole ton of work into something that's you know, not even an inch around, not even an inch big because there's, it's just kind of overkill to go that, that far detailed into something like that. So I'm making the base of the book pink and now we're going to start on her hair and I came straight in with a W3. I wanted to give her black hair. So I used my W3, W5 and W7 and I decided that was dark enough. Um, it reads as black and because her hair is so small, I didn't want to cram any more colors than three into it. I decided that was plenty. So then W5 and you can see how I'm turning the paper just to make my flicks easier on myself so I don't have to fight as much turning my hand and things. I know when I do hair flicking and stuff my hand is kind of in the way of of the paper the major or of the marker the majority of the time. I do I have kind of taught myself to color a little bit crooked with still just touching the tip of that nib to the marker but I try to hold it pretty vertical because I want to get those those flicks very, very fine at the end so that they kind of strand out and I don't end up with a big blob or using the side of the marker. If you are having issue with doing like hair flicks, I recommend just taking a scrap piece of paper and flicking. Some people find it easier to flick away from themselves. Some people find it easier to flick towards themselves. I myself do both. <laughs> I think that's just from all the years I've been coloring, I've kind of root just figured out how to do it both ways. But if you can only flick one direction, turn the paper upside down. It's not the end of the world. You might as well color comfortably. So I'm going to make her eyes green and go in and add that. So I'm adding just kind of the circle 
And then I'm going to start filling it in. And I do come back in with a YG13 at the end because I decided that they looked a little funny. When I finished this part, the inside was just too light and it looked like I drew just a dark line and colored it in with a really light green and I didn't like the way it looked. So I pulled in the YG13 here and I'm going to go in and fill that back in and I find that it finished off her eyes, the colored part of her eyes really well. Now I'm taking this You Are Beautiful sentiment and I'm going to stamp it up in the corner and turn it into a thought bubble. Now I didn't push hard enough on the outside edge. You can see how there's the bottom of the L is missing and the exclamation point and I forgot to film me drawing those back in but I did draw them back in at the end. You'll see that on the finished card picture at the end of the video. So I'm just going to pencil in my thought bubble here and then I take my EK Success journaling pen and I'm going to trace over top of that kind of. I kind of try to make it a little more smooth than the way I sketched it to give it a thought bubble and the two little circles. And then I let that dry for a minute and I came in and erased everything before I started coloring. So I pulled out uh, B9391 and then the BG70 to, I'm not filling in the entire thought bubble. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a haze around the edge and then fading it off into the white of the paper. So I like that look. I figured it was something a little bit different to pop in the corner instead of just the sentiment around her. Kind of made it look like it was part of the image. So we're just going to blend all that in together. And we're coming near the end of the video. Isn't that exciting? So this took me about half an hour to color start to finish. So that's not too long. I've sped it up about two and a half times the original speed. So I am going pretty quick, but I think you guys can see the majority of what I'm doing and how I am filling everything in. I did decide I wanted to pull that in a little further. So I went back over it one more time with that BG70. And then I take my colorless blender and go over top of it one more time. Again, that just helps create that smooth transition between the colors and the white of the paper because it helps push some other stuff through and it just helps blend it in. Now I decided to pull out these E70 markers to do my ground and I did 74, 71, 70. And then again, the colorless blender just to push it back and give it a little bit more texture. So it read like flooring or carpet or something of that nature. I really like the E70s. I don't use them a whole lot because I... I have, I have a hard time finding things that they work for, but I do like them for carpet and grounding and things of that nature. I like that purpley undertone of the brown. It's kind of like a mauve sort of brown color. I, just, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I enjoy this combination tons, and I really wish I could use it more, but it just doesn't seem to work in a lot of the images I color. So I'm always like, I want to use those. They don't work. So then I go over it with the zero here at the end and that just helps push everything into the background and again fade it out into that white of that paper because I'm not coloring an entire scene here. I do love doing big elaborate scene cards. They're hard to film because they take hours and hours to do and I find I have to chop them up a lot and speed them up so much that they're almost hard to watch but I decided to go back in with my ends here and give her some help shape her eyes to make them read a little bit more rounded. And then I'm just going to go around the edge of the image with the B60 marker to help it pop off the page just a little bit. It's hard to see in the video once it dries or the picture at the end, but it is really easy to, to see when you're doing it or when you're looking at the card in person. If you were to have it in front of you, you can see that there's, there's that outline there just to give it that little bit of a pop off the page. So if you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, like I say in every video, I would love for you to subscribe. It helps me out a whole ton. If you can take the three seconds and hit that thumbs up button, if you guys enjoy these videos, that is probably the biggest thing you can do. I read every single one of your guys' comments and I truly love them. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys very, very soon with another one. Bye for now.